All right, this is going to be a lecture, and we're going to be covering uh, floors in Revit. So um, kind of like the other section, um, I'm going to kind of just throw in some generic walls here. Don't do this for our class projects, um, but I'm just going to throw in some walls here so that I've got something to work with and we can visually see what's going on. So starting with floors, floors are going to be under the architecture menu here, and then they're going to be under this menu right here for floor. Now the reason why I went so in depth on walls last time is because they work very similar to the walls. Um, so if I click on the drop down here for floors, we get that same list that we would get with walls. Similarly, if we go into edit type, we get the same uh, menu that we have here um, for actually viewing particular information about it, as well as going to the edit menu and choosing options here for the actual floor itself. Um, so that's going to repeat again when we go to ceilings, so I'm not going to cover it in that one, but just be aware that this is here. All right, so I'm going to go back in here, and this is the one case where I believe, yeah, uh, Revit does have a wood joist in this case. Uh, so this is the one time where Revit's actually going to include um, the joist in this case. And you can see that it's using a nominal 10 inch, um, unlike 2x4s, uh, 2, 6, and eight i believe those all subtract a half inch to be nominal i forget which one eight is but the 10 actually subtracts a uh, three quarter of an inch so this is a 10 inch nominal joist um, that we're working with and then to create floors on top of that there's plywood sheathing um, they use a three quarter inch sheet and then oak flooring which is going to be three quarter inch as well for the finish so you can see how this is constructed in a similar way the joist itself is labeled as a structural material while the plywood sheathing is not, it's just a cover that allows you to put the flooring on top of it and not fall down between the joists. So um, we're going to go with this default floor for now, and I'll give you guys kind of more instruction on floors and things later in the class, but I'm going to use this one right here. So to place floors, um, you can see that, uh, let me back out here. So when I actually went, oh, no, I'm in here. Okay. Um, so, uh, yes, discard. Okay. So when I went into the menu, unlike with, when we go into walls, we get this modify place wall menu here, right? But I can hit escape and just get out of it. This is the first time that we're going to be encountering the actual modify menu here that locks you in. So it puts you in this mode where you have to either hit the red X or the green check mark to either cancel or um, apply the changes that you made, right? Um, so when you're placing walls, you have to use one of these tools to place the lines. There's a couple different options you have here. So I can do a rectangle, and this is kind of my favorite because it's the easiest one to do, especially if you're doing rectangle-shaped rooms. And the easiest way to do that is to just find the center. You see how you can kind of snap to an interior core part of the wall here? I can do that, and then I can draw it throughout there. And I'll hit the green check mark, and we'll go out here. We'll open a 3D view, and we'll see what this looks like. So um, again, remember the... Uh, the walls that we have here, they're going to be at the 20 feet offset. So I'm actually going to change this down um, to up to level two so that they're a little bit shorter and that gives you a bit, a little bit better perspective of that room. And then again, I'm going to change this to consistent colors and fine. And then what is the, oh, I just don't, I didn't change that over back. Okay. So there's the wood floor right there. You can see it. Um, and it has that kind of wood texture and then you can see it over here. So a couple things I want to point out here is that when I was in this uh, drawing area, I actually created two shapes here, all right? So as you draw floors, you can make a whole series of sections, and those all count as one floor. How you actually want to handle that in your model is up to you. Um, I've seen some students where they do one floor per room, so if you need to edit that floor, you just do that one. Other students will do, uh, like, say, all the same floor all at once. Um, so if you have, you know, maybe you have a hallway in this kind of arbitrary space I drew, there's a hallway here, hallway here, hallway here, hallway here. Then you have rooms attached to that and you would do all these rooms at one time and then you'd come back and draw in a second set of floors later. Um, either one of those works perfectly fine. I don't have a preference for either myself. Um, so how you handle that's entirely up to you. Um, since I'm on them, let me double check and see if this is still true. Um, usually you can rotate, but I don't think that's going to work anymore. No, it's not. Um, let's see. Uh, I'll look this up and come back later to it. 
Um, so we've got our floors here. Um, just like the walls, if we go in and modify them after the fact, it will change which one it is that you have selected. So just like walls, if you change the wall with that menu, it changes which one it is. Double clicking on it like I did right here brings this back open and you can see that you have all these boundaries here. Um, just like every kind of a, other things in Revit, these are draggable so I can click and drag, I can resize them. Um, if you put another one inside of one and then apply it, you end up with a hole like that. Um, so we're going to be doing a little bit of that for our project, uh, for our milestone end project um, that we have coming up. So um, let's see, what else do I want to cover? Right, I guess I should start um, actually putting these together on something. So for now, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to delete everything that I had there. And I'm going to start a new f um, floor. And so I'm going to do this in level one. I'm going to start here. Oh, actually, let me show the other options, too. There's the line, um, which works the same way. You can draw it between, um, and you end up with a wall, or sorry, a floor. Um, to access the floors, you have to, and pretty much everything in this 3D view, you do have to click kind of on the edge right there. So watch out when you're selecting things. Um, OK. So I've got this. Um, again, just to reiterate, if I go in here and edit, I have oak flooring here as one option, but I can open the menu here, and I can choose a whole bunch of different stuff if I want to. Uh, brick, if I wanted. Um, what's that actually look like? Fly. So there's a brick floor in here. Um, let me do that to realistic, and you can take a minute to see what that looks like. So there's a realistic with brick flooring. Um, so it can be done in Revit. Um, all right, let's go back to that. So um, let's say that I have a room right here, and then I have another room on top of that. So if this was a two-story house, what I would have to do is go to the second level right here. And so now I'm on the second level right here, and I'm going to drag that over to this one so that I have my levels grouped and my 3D separate. So if I go to level two, and then I start, oops, not ceiling, start the floor again, it's going to be the same process. I'm just going to draw this right here and actually let me use a different tool so there's the pick lines and pick walls tool I'm gonna pick that 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 and that so it's the same process as doing lines I'm just choosing an existing line to base it off of so that's what this tool does and I can complete that now when it gives you this pop-up I'm gonna tell you every single time don't attach all right um, there are very specific instances in which you will want to attach the walls to the floors and to ceilings and other things um, and roofs. Um, it's easier if you don't let it figure it out. I've personally found it easier if you manually assign it after the fact. All right. Um, it's just one of those weird quirks of Revit where I don't know. I, it works right in some situations, but it causes more headaches when it doesn't work right, and then it's not worth fixing. All right. So, um, and then again, I'm going to reassign this to the wood one that we had, and we have a small 10 by 10 room with a set of uh, floor on both the ground floor and on the roof up here, or rather the ceiling, I guess, or the floor for the second floor. Um, now, one thing I want to point out to you guys, and I hope you can see it in the video, you see how it gets kind of glitchy? Like we have this outer area here, and then there's the overlap where the floor is, mixes with the walls. That's a graphic glitch, and just in any 3D program that uses numbers, like that's just how 3D programs work. When you have two surfaces occupying the same spot, mathematically it rounds slightly differently to some weird tenth place of number, and that decides which one of these shows up in which spot. So that's going to happen. The easiest way to fix that is by using one of the settings I showed you guys in the last demo, which is the height offset from level. So in the previous demo, we had taken the walls, right? And I told you guys you could do a top offset and do one foot. And that would pop this wall up one foot. Well, what we're going to do is we're actually going to do the height offset from level one right here. And I moved my mouse outside of the box there, caught myself. So I usually set this to just a half inch above. And typically, it completely gets rid of that visual glitch while it still kind of keeps the floor relatively close. So you can see here, there's the floor, there's that. Um, maybe even quarter inch, but I don't know, sometimes that one even goes wrong at a distance. 
Uh, yeah, you can kind of see it sticking through a little bit right there. Whereas at half inch, it's pretty good. I can get out that far and it's still fine. Um, so that's just one of those things that I'm going to tell you. Just do this. It's going to make your life a lot easier because otherwise it kind of sucks seeing those glitchy bits. Um, and we'll continue on from here. So again, same, same idea. We're just going to bump these uh, walls up. Um, so this time I'm going to say... Um, let's go ahead and create another level real quick. So I'm going to go zoom out here, and then I want this side. Okay, got it. And then we're going to do a copy-paste, so Control-C, Control-V on the keyboard for me. This, of course, wants to put this over here for no particular reason, so I'm going to do 10 foot. And then, like I showed you in the previous video, we're going to need to go to... Um, view and then plan views floor plan generate a new level 3 and then we'll move this level 3 over here and then oh, come on over there all right okay and then we're gonna need to adjust how it views downwards so we're gonna go to the underlay option right here so it goes graphics underlay second set right here we're going to change the range base level to level 2. And there we have, actually if we change this to, did I move my walls up? I didn't move my walls up. So yeah, right now it should only be seen that because the walls themselves are too far down. So I'm going to change or select these walls right here. I'm going to change them up to level 3. And that gets me a visual floor that I can then do my third floor on. So I'm going to go back to architecture, floor, and then I'm just going to draw this rectangle right in here again green check mark again don't attach and that gives me this little three by oh and I did the wrong ones again um, so we're gonna change this to the wood finish and again we'll give this the half inch offset so that it doesn't collide with that so if I pull this down right here you can see we've got all three walls or all three uh, floors in that space along with the walls all right, um, so that's all for the floors demo. I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna use this same model now that we have it to generate the uh, ceilings as well. So I will see you guys in the next demo.